Hi, my name is Jakob. I'm with the National Museum of Denmark. Uh, I've been a part of running cultural heritage hackathons in Denmark for the past roughly 10 years. Uh, we've been calling it Hack for DK all along. Um, the outset of the initiative was back in 2011 and based on the realization that although, although we are fairly creative and productive, uh, being glam professionals, obviously there's a lot of smart, clever and creative people not working for glam institutions. So what we set out to do in 2012 was to invite volunteers uh, outside of our organizations to experiment and uh, be creative working with digital heritage material from various Danish glam institutions. Um, Obviously, we wanted to try to challenge the practice that uh, that we had at that time and still have, uh, inviting someone other than ourselves into the uh, creative space of figuring out how to use um, digital heritage in new, um, interesting ways that might not be the traditional ones that are coming out of regular institutions. So in 2012, we basically just in, tried to invite people uh, to see if, if they were actually willing to be part of a creative weekend. We held it at the Royal Library in Copenhagen. And um, we were pretty much just yet curious to see if anybody actually showed up at the event, which they um, luckily did. And, uh, and since then, we've been having Hack for DK weekends uh, annually at various Danish uh, uh, cultural institutions. Um, we've always tried to balance how to engage with, uh, with the people attending the event. One of the issues or challenges we've had is that, that we early on saw that there was a, a, quite a, some variation in the needs among uh, the participants in terms of facilitation of the event. Part of the uh, participants actually wanted to be left alone with the content that that institutions provided for the hackathons and figure out which groups they wanted to work in and who they wanted to collaborate with, while others had a need for a more firm kind of uh, facilitation, getting help figuring out which groups to work with and which people to group up with and, and also help in figuring out what ideas or projects might be the most relevant to work with. So from from year to year, we've always tried to like um, create a better event that kind of suits everyone, but it's always been kind of a challenge to, to actually meet that kind of, of need among the participants. Um, we've been very focused on having a hooklet event, a cozy event. Um, uh, that's been one of the primary focuses to, to, to create a very free arena for the participants to themselves figure out how they wanted to use or, or kind of leverage in terms of, of doing the stuff that they, they like to do. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of programmers, designers, storytellers, um, various kinds of people with various kinds of competences. Um, but we've always had a, had a big emphasis on on a very free kind of event. We've never had big prizes. We've never uh, focused a lot on what we wanted them to work on or what kinds of ideas we wanted them to work on. Um, that's been kind of one of the philosophies uh, around Hack for DK or throughout all of the years. Um, I'm just showing you a lot of images or photographs from the various events throughout the years to give you guys an idea of of the vibe there and and what it's been looking like and and uh, how it's been uh, uh, throughout the years. So obviously there's been a lot of interesting projects coming out of Hack for DK and and far too many for me to to kind of go through just a, just a portion of them. But uh, but I've picked out one in particular that caught my interest when it was created uh, during one of the events. Uh, which is like a project that kind of mm, feeds a lot of different kind of aspects of digital heritage into one. So first of all, it's a it's a data set based off of many years of, of substantial crowdsourcing on uh, records on citizens of Copenhagen. 
Those records have been transcribed by volunteers through many years. So that was the data set. The data set is used to create a visualization of uh, parts of Denmark where people moving to Copenhagen were coming from. And then I hope that you can hear it in the presentation. The music underlying the visualization actually automated, automatically uh, produced music based off of data points in the data set. So it's an, it's an automatic mm, uh, musical work based off of crowdsourced uh, digital uh, heritage collection uh, data. So I think that's kind of a very cool project that kind of feeds many elements of digital heritage into, uh, into one. Hack for DK numbers, uh, mm, there's been a v variation of how many participants have been there throughout the years. Um, uh, paradoxically, the COVID-19 year, we, we never got around to actually having an, an event. It would have been obvious to, to use that uh, situation for all users of museum and archives being converted from analog into digital at, at a single event that would, that would kind of call, that would be a major call to action for actually digital heritage to kind of stand up and get on the scene. Um, but we kind of in certain ways didn't get around to it that year. And, and it turned out that the community it's not a self-sustaining one. It's very re re it relies a lot on us doing an a, an annual event, and a lot of the motivation among the 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 the, the community um, members, so to speak, relies on on that weekend or the the physical event was was one of the realizations. Um, so just a brief note on how we've organized the uh, Hack for DK throughout the years. Uh, there's been a lot of variation among the, the organizing institutions. So if you want to be a part of funding Hack for DK, which is not very expensive when it, when, when it comes down to it, but, but if you want to be a part of uh, the organizational group, you are more than welcome. So we've got to have had a, many different kinds of organizational inst uh, institutions behind Hack for DK throughout the years. And we've also seen quite a few people traveling through Hack for DK or being a part of the event once or maybe twice and, and then maybe not returning again. So, so, so it's a very kind of, it's a very um, fluid community, if you will, uh, and has been throughout the years. Um, but we've throughout all the years tried to lobby by evidence for the value of open heritage data. We've been trying to lobby by evidence for the value of participatory and open design. And, and we've been lobbying for the value of, of free and, and creative communities and the power of, of, of letting uh, the creativity be free in terms of uh, digital heritage. Um, so we've definitely had, have had a lot of fun. There's been many, many ideas developed as part of Hack for DK. Some, some of those have actually made it into real life, which is also a, an, a kind of interesting point about Hack for DK for it to be like a, like a, like, like a place where ideas or projects might be born. And, and turned into like real life projects. There are uh, quite a few examples of that from Hack for DK. And, um, and then we've ob obviously used Hack for DK as glam professionals, uh, at least for myself in, in my case, as a, as a place to kind, of, to kind of give birth to new ideas that have been developing. One of the big projects that, that, are, that I've been a part of launching at the National Museum has been most definitely based on like, um, development throughout the years with this kind of creative community and and like um, making the idea even more and more like clear throughout the years and and now we've actually launched a project so that's a, that's a cool thing and an interesting thing about hack for dk as I see it so I just want to uh, end this brief presentation uh, the way that we normally kind of end the welcoming at hack for dk which is have fun happy hacking. So thanks a lot, everybody.